Bullshit. The No BS Marketing Show is brought to you by Laramore's men's and women's designer clothing. Free shipping, free returns. Shop men's and women's designer clothing, shoes, accessories, jewelry, and more online at laramores.com or in-store downtown Pittsburgh. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm Dave Mastovich. Which Snickers, you're not you when you're hungry, TV ads your favorite? Maybe it's the classic spot with revered comedian Betty White tackling screen giant Abe Vigoda on the football field. Or perhaps you fancy the ads featuring renowned divas Aretha Franklin and Liza Minnelli. Whichever ad you prefer, you can be sure of this. Your choices are aplenty because the You're Not You When You're Hungry campaign has been revolutionizing and growing the Snickers brand on a global scale since 2010. That's a long time, folks, and that's a no BS success on the marketing side. Yet all tackling and singing aside, perhaps the bigger question is this. Why are these ads so powerful? Why do they resonate so much with so many? Sure, we all chuckle at the idea of two legends duking it out over a simple Snickers bar. But what the ads speak to is about much more than our relentless love of chocolate and peanuts. They speak to the phenomenon known as decision fatigue. You may not have heard of it, but you've definitely experienced it. In clinical terms, decision fatigue is, quote, the deteriorating quality of decision making by an individual following a long session of making decisions, end quote. It's what happens after we've had to call the shots and everything from what our kids eat for breakfast to how to organize a presentation, to making sure you made each meeting, to fighting through traffic and picking the best, quickest way to get home. In simple terms, it's what happens to our brains when we're tired. Why we need that Snickers bar is when our brains are exhausted from making decisions, decision fatigue, and we're hungry, or as my friends like to use that catchphrase from a few years back, hangry, to describe me, we desperately need that Snickers bar. Don't believe us? Don't believe me? Ask science. In research published by the National Academy of Sciences, psychologists studied more than 1,100 cases to determine what factors impact whether or not a judge approves a criminal for parole. Now think about this. This is one of those rare cases where this is truly big time stuff. Maybe not life or death because they're not deciding the death penalty, but they are deciding whether or not a judge approves a criminal for parole. And when you take into account 1,100 cases, it's a pretty significant sampling size. What do you think the research revealed? At the beginning of the day, a judge was likely to give a favorable rating 65% out of the time. Two out of three people were getting a favorable rating on the parole issue when it was done at the beginning of the day. However, later in the morning, the likelihood steadily dropped to, wait for it, zero. After a lunch break, the likelihood jumped back up to 65%. Then as the day moved on, it fell back down to zero, regardless of the scale of the crime. And there you have it. Just as the Snicker ad tells us, you're not you when you're hungry. So what happens when decision fatigue gets us down? Turns out that the impact of decision fatigue is fairly common among us all. From our kids' history teacher to Betty White and Abe Vigoda, let's take a look. Here's what happens. First, we avoid decisions. A study conducted by Columbia University found that, on average, we make over 70 decisions on a daily basis. That seems low for me, but I'm narcissistic and think of myself and think I'm doing all this great stuff and sometimes I'm a BSer, so 70 decisions seems low, but we make over 70 decisions on a daily basis. That's a lot of choosing and it wears us down. Moreover, Columbia researchers also found that when presented with purchasing options, most consumers defaulted to the easiest choice of all, purchasing nothing. It turns out that choice can actually be a burden. 
Second bullet, we face a reduced ability to make trade-offs. Life is pretty much about making trade-offs. However, decision fatigue impairs our ability to make the trade. If either of two choices have both positive and negative elements, we struggle to choose one or the other. Third point, we make impulse purchases. With decreased willpower comes a decreased ability to resist making impulse buys. That's why supermarkets put the chocolate and trashy magazines at checkout. That's what drives the merchandise layout decisions of retailers. And it's why people who shop while hungry make more impulse decisions. Number four, we suffer from impaired self-regulation. Those 70 decisions we make each day, they also reduce our ability for self-control. A study published in Psychology Today reveals that decision fatigue drains our stamina, mental resources, and emotions. When that happens, we make poor choices. From sending a text that we'll later regret, to saying things that are better left unsaid, to doing crazy shit. Mm, uh, About that Snickers bar. By now, you're hungry. Me too. Hear how the brilliant folks set Mars, the parent company to Snickers, tapped into some powerful stuff when they equated decision fatigue with hunger. But first, check out this quote from Esquire magazine. One of the country's leading specialty stores for selection and service. Don't leave Pittsburgh without your little black bag filled with beautiful fashions from the city's premier family-owned clothier for men and women. Experience the highest quality designer and private label collections, impeccable customer service, and custom tailoring that have been Larimer's hallmark for more than 75 years. Now that's an endorsement of Larimer's. Shop online at larimer's.com or in-store downtown Pittsburgh. Back to the phenomenon known as decision fatigue. Just what exactly does decision fatigue have to do with Snickers bars? Turns out, quite a bit. Decision fatigue is what happens to our brains when they've made too many, as the name implies, decisions. The marketing team at Mars, Snickers' parent company, took notice and launched You're Not You When You're Hungry, a world-renowned TV ad campaign that leveraged decision fatigue to help sell Snickers bars. In a detailed overview in CampaignLive.com, they share how they did it. Here are the key takeaways. Make a decision and take notice. For two years, 2007 through 2009, Snickers fell behind its competition. They lost market share. They needed to up their game. So what they do? They practiced no BS marketing to drill down to a message that would resonate with their audiences. They did the no BS marketing in three simple steps. Step number one, conduct marketing intel so you can better understand your customer opportunity. I believe that the first and most important part of marketing, real marketing, no BS marketing, is to understand your customer opportunity. Why do I think that? Because everything hinges on understanding your customer opportunity. And I didn't say just understanding your customer. It's understanding your customer opportunity. Part of that is through marketing intel when you go out and talk to customers, past customers, potential customers, referral sources, people who are raving fans, your your employees, your leaders, your middle management. That's part of understanding your customer opportunity, but so is doing the real drill down of your target markets. So you analyze and study those target markets because one subtle tweak and who you're trying to reach an influence can mean a seven-finger tip hit, hit to the bottom line. So I believe firmly that the first and most important step of real marketing is understand your customer opportunity. Everything else comes from that. Your no BS messaging and storytelling, your big idea, all can be built from you better understanding your customer opportunity. So step one for Snickers and they're trying to better understand their customer opportunity, was to conduct marketing intel. They learned that in 2010, half of all people who bought a Snickers in one year would not buy in the next. Half of all people who bought a Snickers in one year would not buy 
in the next. This insight became one of the objectives that drove their campaign. Increase awareness and retention of message. P- persuade people to buy Snickers more regularly to make it more of a habit. If they're buying it once a year and then not buying it the next, you've got to increase awareness and retention of message so you can persuade them to buy Snickers more regularly. You want to make it a habit. You want to get leverage that habit loop and get that customer to keep Snickers in your habit. That was the first step of their no BS marketing that led to the you're not you and you're hungry campaign was marketing intel. Step two is drill down. Remember, we're trying to better understand your customer opportunity involves marketing intel and drill down, which then everything plays off of that. Your no BS messaging, your marketing solutions, your marketing recommendations, your big idea. Step two, the drill down. Over the company's history, their messaging focused on men. In 2010, they decided that their messaging needed to be, quote, more knocked up to reach the populist market than jackass to reach a niche market, comparing two popular movies of that era. In short, they realized that Snickers needed to reach a new audience. Step number three of Snickers' no BS marketing, which led to their you're not you when you're hungry campaign. Step three, reach new audience with a new platform. Equate Snickers with fame, and decision fatigue. That's because marketing is a process, not an event. Marketing is a process, not an event. With fame as their platform, Snickers created a campaign that crossed channels. They pulled in multiple famous people to convey the message that when faced with decision fatigue, all of us are alike. They they created, <laughs> they equated, not created, but they equated the commoner with the famous screen legend. So you're whether you're Betty White or the girl next door, you're not you when you're hungry. They knew that marketing is a process, not an event. They made fame their platform and created a campaign that crossed multiple channels And they pulled in famous people to convey the message that with decision fatigue, we're all the same. We all fall prey to it. doesn't matter who you are. You're not you when you're hungry. The result, in just one year following the launch of the campaign, Snickers saw a 15.9% growth in global sales. What's the no BS lesson to be learned here? Don't let decision fatigue get you down. (laughs) At Mass Solutions, we're masters at practicing what we preach. And that's why we have a third part of this for you when we share tried and true insights for keeping decision fatigue at bay. You're listening to the No BS Marketing Show Brought to you by Laramore's Men's and Women's Designer Clothing. I'm Dave Mastovich of Mass Solutions. Here we are in early in a new year and you brought your A-game to the table. You're committed to saying goodbye to habits that don't work. You're ready to tackle challenges. You're stimulated and excited for change. Problem is you're exhausted from the daily grind. You're hungry. Where'd that Snickers bar go? And you can't decide where to begin. That's decision fatigue. And it's followed you into the new year. Throughout this show, I've been talking to you about decision fatigue, the brain drain you feel after having made too many decisions. I left you with this no BS lesson. Don't let decision fatigue get you down. So stay with me because I want to see you stick to your resolutions. Follow these five tried and true insights for keeping that stealthy cat known as decision fatigue, off of your front lawn. Five steps, five insights, five tried and true insights to avoid decision fatigue. Number one, plan ahead. Duh. I know, sounds simple. But planning what you'll wear is exceptionally powerful. Why? Because too many of us lose precious time each morning staring into our closets, fuzzily trying to decide what to wear. It ends now, people. Take a cue from the late, great Steve Jobs, who famously donned a black turtleneck each day. Or President Barack Obama, 
who had it all planned out with knowing what the ties and the similarities between the shirts and the suits. When you're designing world-changing technology like Jobs was, or leading the United States like Obama was, you need to focus on the task at hand. Stop deliberating about your dress shirts. Number two, throw out the need for perfection. This is the one that, you know, I got to practice what I preach and I got to try to do as I say because it's real hard and I always try to live by that perfect is the enemy of good. Perfect is the enemy of good. But number two is throw out the need for protection. Businessman author, Dallas Mavericks owner and Pittsburgh native, Mark Cuban said it best. Perfectionism is the enemy of profitability. And he's right. I've lived that. (laughs) The desire to be perfect slows you down and leads you to think that you need to make more decisions than are necessary, which is a drag on your business, your clients, and ultimately your bottom line. You want to remain fleet-footed and fast. Strive for action, not perfection, and you'll stay the course. The third tried and true insight to help you avoid decision fatigue. Choose when you will and won't look at your phone. Choose when you will and won't look at your phone. Our mobile devices have all but become an extension of our physical selves. We never leave home without them. Yeah, that's a great uh, ad line from American Express. We don't leave home without them. Well, we've now made it to where our mobile devices are an extension of our physical being, and we never leave home without them. We rarely do anything unless they're within arm's reach. But you know what? They're distracting you, me, and everybody else. And instead of focusing on the task at hand, the budget that needs to be reviewed, the sales call that needs to be made, you end up facing an unwanted crop of decisions to make. Decisions such as, should I like this Facebook post of my neighbor's new lawn ornaments? The answer is no. Put down your phone. Stay focused. The fourth tried and true insight to help you avoid decision fatigue. Kiss. That's right. Except, I mean, keep it simple, stupid. Make a deliberate choice to take the easy route. Now, at Mass Solutions, we actually say keep it systematically simple. Trying to stay more positive than the old keep it simple, stupid. But you use whichever one you want. Keep it simple, stupid, or keep it systematically simple. But either way, KISS, make a deliberate choice to take the easy route. While this approach doesn't apply to the complex choices in our lives, like who we'll marry, where we'll buy a house, what school district we'll raise our kids in, it does apply to many of the day-to-day decisions we have to make. Don't overcomplicate. Whether it's what you eat for lunch, the title of your presentation, or how you introduce yourself to the new CEO, less is more. If you write something, stop obsessing over it because less is more. If you wrote 100 words, probably should have did it in 75. Less is more. Don't overcomplicate. Make that decision quickly. And the fifth tried and true insight to avoid decision fatigue. Do what works for you. All of us have our own strategies for staying focused. We often just don't know it. But now that you're aware of how decision fatigue operates, take a moment to think about the choices you've made that allow you to perform at your best. Is it making your biggest decisions by 9 a.m. every day? Limiting your to-do list to no more than 10 items? Only looking at one page of a menu so you're not overwhelmed in restaurants? Figure out what's worked for you and commit to doing more of it. I learned a long time ago, decades ago, that my best time is about 9, 30, 10 o'clock to about 11, 30. Then I start getting into that decision fatigue and hangry mode. So you'll notice, or you might not notice, but uh, I'll tell you, most of the podcasts are taped from 10 to 11 um, when I'm not doing podcasts and I have to do writing for a client. Typically comes at 10 to 11. If I feel I want to get a major presentation for a client, I push to schedule it at 10. So we need to know what works best for us. I know when I'm best at writing, in what location of my house, what location of the office, which place, Rock and Joe's. I always give a shout out to hashtag Rock and Joe's. I guess it would be hashtag Rock and Joe's. Jeez, at Rock and Joe's here in Pittsburgh. 
and we'll we'll make a note for that for them. But you should do that too. You should know where things work best for you, what time of day, what location, which device, which uh, way you do things, and figure out what's worked for you. Commit to doing more of it. Now, stop pondering your next move. Get back to work. But while at work, keep listening to the No Bullshit Marketing Show brought to you by Laramore's Men's and Women's Designer Clothing. Free shipping, free returns. Reduce your decision-making on the clothing side. Shop Men's and Women's Designer Clothing, shoes, accessories, jewelry, and more online at Laramore's.com or in-store downtown Pittsburgh. Let Laramore's help with your decision fatigue. Also, send me your favorite hangry story about when you or someone you know needed a Snickers bar so bad. You send that to me at dave at massolutions.biz, and I'll send you a signed copy of Get Where You Want to Go through marketing, selling, and storytelling. For the raving fans who already have the book, if you send me your favorite hangry story about when you or a friend needed a Snickers bar and turned into a funny story, I'll send you a No Bullshit Marketing t-shirt. So it's either a signed copy of Get Where You Want to Go through marketing, selling, and storytelling, or a No Bullshit Marketing t-shirt. Send that to dave at massolutions.biz. While you're at it, visit MassSolutions.biz for show notes plus additional marketing and messaging resources. And sign up for the NoBS Marketing Weekly Update. You'll receive timely, valuable ideas to improve your marketing and transform your message. It's light. It's intended to be read in two minutes or less, and it just might trigger bright ideas for you. Again, to sign up, visit MassSolutions.biz. Remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions.